Hi, we're going to talk about learning the fretboard. There's lots of videos on YouTube about learning the fretboard and I'm going to teach you to learn the fretboard in one nanosecond, that sort of thing. And they all, I don't say all, but a lot of them fall down on, on quite a few points. One, they're trying to say to you, if you see a video that says, I'm going to teach you how to learn the fretboard in, understand the fretboard in two minutes, you think, oh, brilliant. I, I'm going to know the fretboard in two minutes, but it doesn't really work like that, whether they say it or not. Now, but the problem with, with a lot of these systems is they're using kind of tricks to remember things. So let me explain what I mean. The, the kind of tricks they might use is they might say, right, that's an E note. OK, because that's an E note, we know that two frets down, we've got a D note and two frets down from that, we've got a C note. So they're teaching you this. So then they say, right, find another E note. Um, so let's find that E note here, right? And they say two frets down is a D, two frets down is a C, and they'll fi help you find these patterns all over the fretboard. That's kind of good, but the problem is, when you come to this note, you're, you're not thinking it's D, you're thinking, hang on, where's E? Ah, it's two frets down, it's D. So what you're doing is you're relying on another piece of information to help you find the piece of information you want. So it, it's not, it doesn't become a one-step process, it becomes a two or sometimes even a three-step process. Now, it does teach you the notes on the fretboard very quickly, but it doesn't teach you them in a way that you can recall them quickly. Yeah, and that's really not helpful. All right. The other one, and I'm reluctant to show you this because you, you might start doing it. But anyway, another one that you see all the time is this one. They'll say, this is an A note. You know, this is an A note because, you know, this is an A note. And you see this octave relationship going on. Again, the problem is you're not seeing this as an A note. You're seeing that A note and you're relating that to that. OK, not good. Yeah, it just takes too long. Um, they'll do it with these two strings here. So I'll say that's a D. So therefore, that's a D. Yeah. And then they do it. Then they say, right, well, that's a, that's a G. So therefore, that's a G. And we're compensated by going up a fret on the B string. Well, that, that's another piece of information. from When I'm on the B string, I don't go there to get that one. I go there. And then, and then you might even go, well, I know what that one is, so I go down to there. Oh, that's a G, so that's a G, so that's a G. Whoa, okay, your, your brain is now getting overloaded with all these steps. And ultimately, that's going to slow you down, okay, because you need to know the fretboard to play guitar. There's not, well, not, you don't need it to play guitar, but you need it to, if you want to take your guitar playing further, it's so, so important is understanding the fretboard. So, let, let's let's explain a system on how to remember the, the fretboard, which is really going to help you and which isn't going to rely on finding another piece of information. OK, so let's start where you, you might well be at already. Most guitarists know the E string really well. OK, therefore, they know that one. So there's two, that's two out of the way. Now, let's try and think, why do they know that really well? They know it really well because of bar chords. OK, because when you're playing a G bar chord, you go there. A bar chord, you go there. C bar chord, you go there. That's why you know it. You know it because you use it on a very regular basis. OK, that's that's basically it. All right. That's basically the reason why you know the E string really well. OK, now that's the same reason you know the A string pretty well. And you probably don't know it as well as you know the E string. But you know the A string pretty well because you used to play in bar chords here. You used to go, oh, there's a C, there's a D, there's an F. So you've got these reference points. You have to have these reference points to play the chords, all right? Now, people tend not to play bar chords um, from other strings. Therefore, they don't know the other strings very well. They know the E, the A, and that E. And these three become a bit of a mystery. And a lot of people, like I say, the D string, they just refer it back to the E string. But like we said, that's not a good idea. So what do we do about this? Well, we've got to put something in place which is going to enable us to practice this on a regular basis so it sinks in, right? Now, one thing you can do is you can start playing bar chords on the D string, yeah? Also, this is going to open up your vocabulary for playing chords. So, for example, you can play an F chord like this, right? So, that is an F note, yeah? That's the fifth of the F, that's an F. So, it's an F5, really. Yeah, if I wanted to put the major third in, I'd have to do, I'd have to do it like that, which is a, uh, a little bit awkward. Well, probably it's probably all going to help you, but I will play an F like that a lot. 
They're playing an F power chord there or there. You can play it there. Now, if you start thinking like that, yeah, that's really going to help you. It's really going to help you memorize the notes on the D string. So when you're playing along to your favorite song, whatever it might be, and you see there's a G chord there, instead of playing your G there or there or even there, okay, think about the G there, okay, right, and just play and just play chords like that. Now that will automatically help you learn the notes on the on the on the D string, yeah, because you'll be using them on a regular basis. So now, hopefully, you know you're starting to know the E, the A, and the D. Now this isn't going to happen overnight. Um, but if you just do this on a regular basis, it, it, it will trickle in and it will get there. And that's a far better way than trying to do a YouTube video that tells you to learn it in five minutes because I just, I don't, I, you know, I just don't think that works. Right. You've got to be realistic about these things. If it was easy, everyone would be, you know, like, I don't know, Steve I or whatever, but it's, it's not, it's hard. Um, embrace the difficulty. So, so those chords are like that. Now, another way you can play bar chords, um, they're not, not bar, bar chords are the wrong word, sorry. Another word, way you can play chords from the D string is we can do these chords. So Jimi Hendrix would have done an A like that a lot. So it's a partial one of those. So I'm just going five, uh, sorry, seven, six, five. So I'll play an A chord like that a lot. I might put my thumb over the top, but I'm seeing that the thing is, I'm seeing that A note there. The minor version is that. Okay. So play chords like that. So there's your major shape, there's your minor shape. Yeah. Or I could do an A there. So, th so thinking about bar chords from that D string is really going to help you. Right. Um, let's skip the G string for a second. Let's think about the B string. So how are we going to learn the B string? We're going to learn the B string through playing D chords. All right. So this is a D chord because that, that is a D note there. So if I want to play an E chord, I can play it there. Look, that's an E note there. If I want to play an F chord, that's an F. I want to play a G chord there. A, B. Okay. Now I can also do that with minor chords. Remember your D minor shape. Yeah, so that's A minor there. And I know it's A minor because that's an A note. Yeah, so if I start to play along to songs, thinking, right, I'm going to play along to this song, but I'm going to use D shapes. And we're thinking, you know, simple songs with just major and minor chords in. You can play along just using these shapes. It'll also make you sound a bit different. It's, it's, it's a really good thing to do. So you can have some time playing, playing songs using chords built from the D string and sometime using chords built from the B string. Okay, so if you do that over a period of time, you've now learned the E, the A, the D, uh, the B, and this. So you've only got one string left. You've got the G string, okay? Well, let's go for a different method on the G string. Let's not do chords built off that. We could build chords off the G string. That's totally fine. We, we could do major chords like that uh, and then minor chords like that if we wanted to, okay? But why, okay, why not come up with a different method? We don't want to confuse your brain. You've got two, two strings we're doing the, the new chords from. So let, let just learn, try learning it by rote, right? Try learn it by rote. Now, start, if we're learning it by rote, we can start with a, we, it's good to have a reference point in the middle, right? Because then you're starting to break the string down. So I kind of think, I think that's a D, right? So I start with my D. Right, and I know that's a D, okay? Then I start building from there, okay? And then I just might play a little game like this. I might go, right, D, that's D. So what's that? Oh, that's B flat. That's E. That's G. That's F sharp. That's B. Okay, play a little game like that, all right? The problem is if you play, if you do that on every string, your brain's going to get a bit confused because it's going to go, well, hang on, we did the G string yesterday and, and that was C and now you're saying that, that, that this is E. We don't want to confuse the brain too much. If you give it, there's different things to learn in different ways. It's going to remember things better. Okay. You've got to, when you're playing guitar, you've got to think about your brain works. And if you don't take that into account, um, your learning isn't going to be very efficient and you really want your learning to be efficient. So I'm trying to do, do trying to do the G string in a, in a slightly different way. So just try and play a little game like that. Do, do things like put a, put a timer on. Okay. And think, right. 
how many can I do in a minute? Okay, so I'm gonna go like C, G, E, D, B flat. Do that. Am I playing? Yes. Or was I playing the? Uh, I might be playing the B string there. I can't. <laughs> right. Anyway, to try and learn all these, try and try and learn all these chords, learn all these these strings in this manner, and eventually you'll become you'll become really quick and really smooth at it. Uh, but like anything, it does require a bit of hard work. Yeah. And if you're thinking, well, oh, that sounds like that sounds like too much of a challenge, and I'd rather go to one of these YouTube videos and learn it in two minutes flat. Fine, but you're never you're never really going to know it that well. To learn it that well, you, there's got to be a bit of dedication. There's got to be a bit of hard work behind it. And my method with the chords, in particular on the on the, the D and the B string, it's you're learning other things with it. You're learning all these these new chord shapes as well. Yeah, and that that's going to be advantageous. So you're getting you're getting two for the price of one with me. All right, so um, have fun with that. See ya.